now that you're a year in, what can you take away from your experience? Well, the start of that question, I was going to interrupt you because I had managed a 12U travel team. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you know, the, the magnitude of the position um, really hits you. Uh, you know, when you coach and you're on a staff, uh, you obviously put everything you have into every day. Uh, you go home um, and you have an ability to, to kind of let it go. As a manager, when you go home, you, it takes a little longer to let mm. those wins and, or those losses go. Well, 102 losses. I don't want to go too far into that. Right. But a lot of times, season to season, you build on something or you take something away from last season. Where do you even begin on what to take away from last season? You know, it's a great question. And, and I think I can, I can answer it really directly because I feel strongly about how we finished. And, mm -hmm. and in that, regardless of the record, wins and losses, we, we competed every day to, to win. And um, I think that the younger players that we had that were around – from let's say July, August, really understood, started to understand the culture that we need to win baseball games, the work that needs to be put to win baseball games, uh, their routines, and you started to see them develop and they started to see them kind of come together, mm -hmm. which was really good. And it's a good sign moving forward. It's one that we can build off going into next year. Speaking of that leadership, right, last year, I've got this here, 64 different players. You had 33 rookies. You had 22 major league debuts. So the eldest of statesmen, the, the Chad Penders, who you might lose, the Stephen Votes, who you do lose, where, where does next year's leadership come from? Well, it's got to come from guys that, that have been here, even if it is in a limited role or a limited time, which is Seth Brown. Um, you know, some of these younger players that, that we drafted, you know, the Nick Allens, uh, the Jonah Brides, um, you know, they're, they're going to have an understanding. They do have an understanding of what it takes to be an A, what it means to be an A. And uh, from our coaching staff, you know, the coaching staff really uh, is a foundation that's, that's been together for a while. Uh, and, and we're going to set a tone, a, a tone that, uh, uh, that our expectations are to come and work hard and, and to prepare to win. Check my notes here. Now, you're not the one that's going to make a decision on Sean Murphy, right? I am not that one, no. <laughs> but, but um, it, my decision <laughs> is to ride him in the three-hole, but right. you know what? That's, uh, it's not up to me. In reality, though, can you hope for him as a person and for your team that whatever happens gets resolved? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think once we get through this week, um, you know, I think that – uh, for, for Sean, I talked to him last week and, and basically just kind of laid it out there. I mean, it's, it's the elephant in the room, right? Sure. We all understand uh, where we're at as an organization, the value that Sean provides, not only on the field, off the field, but, but also in, in resources. And, uh, and that's the truth. And so uh, you know, Sean had a great impact on us this last season, and we hope to have him uh, in the lineup and, and leading this club. But if that's not the case, uh, we do have – you know, a, a, a great young, talented prospect that uh, that's in line to, to come up and, and get his opportunity. And I think you're talking about Shea Langoliers, right? I mean, I'm, I'm following this. You're following this. I'm sure he's got his eyes on this. What would a next season look like for him if indeed that is the opportunity? Yeah, he'll get an opportunity to, to go compete for that starting job. Uh, I, you know, obviously in this game, there's, there's no guarantees. Um, we also have a, a couple other young mm -hmm. prospects in our organization. Tyler Schottestrom had a great year. Um, so, you know, for him, I think he's doing all the right things. We've communicated this offseason. He's preparing to come in and, and, uh, and, you know, compete for the role. Just looking back at last season and getting to those 102 losses, a lack of offense was a consistent factor. Is that something that can be helped or aided, I don't want to say fixed, but from season to season, how do you look to improve on that next year, the production? Yeah, I think, you know, obviously we have to raise our level of expectation and understand that we, you know, there's areas that we can improve in offensively, especially with cutting down strikeouts, yeah. uh, hitting with runners in scoring position. And, you know, that comes with experience. It really does. I know as a, as a player myself, uh, you go through uh, the learning curves, the ups and downs, and you know, as you talked about, we do have a lot of young talent on this team, and, and it's going to take some time for them to, to understand the adjustments that the league has made on them. I think we saw some of that. I think we saw Shea Langliers come up, have success, then really, you know, struggle yep. uh, when, the, when the league made adjustments. And then he, uh, towards the end of September, cut the strikeouts down, put, put, put the ball in play more, and, and had some more success. So, If you could give your group a little bit of reinforcements, what area would it be? 
Well, I think, you know, overall, um, if we're looking to, you know, add talent to this roster, you'd like the talent to have some experience. You'd like them to, to have had, you know, some success at least at the major league level and, and be able to, to step in and, and uh, fulfill roles that, uh, that will help impact this ball club win. I was looking at all the new rule changes, and obviously the pitch clock is what's going to catch people's attention. That's going to be a big difference even watching a game. And maybe the casual fan might think that for the pitcher, that's the biggest deal. You were saying earlier that for hitters, the pitch clock might affect them more than pitchers. Yeah, I think if you really watch the game, you see the routines that some hitters have. They step out after every pitch. They adjust their batting gloves. They tap their helmet. Um, that takes time. And, uh, you know, they're going to limit the walkout song to 10 seconds. So <laughs> that's going to make an, that's going to be a big adjustment you know for that guys, already, you know. Huh? So, yeah, um, I think it's going to help the game. It's going to help the, the pace of the game. But I do think that the hitters are going to have the biggest uh, adjustment to, to really stay in the batter's box and, and be prepared to hit within eight seconds of that clock being, uh, you know, being down to zero. Two more things. Uh, J.P. Sears and Ken Waldachuk came in, earned roles, opportunities. Obviously, coming into the organization, that was a transition, but they did well in a small sample size. What do you look for from them, maybe even to start next year in that rotation already? Yeah, you know, I hope they come to spring training prepared to, to win a job in the rotation. Um, you know, both of these young pitchers, as you talked about, came from, you know, outside the organization. Uh, that's never easy to make that adjustment, and I think we talked through that a little bit um, before they left uh, for the off season. Uh, you know, both have the ability to to have long careers as left handers in this league, and and have impact here in Oakland. And I think we see that, and I think they understand uh, the amount of work that it takes at the big league level to have that success. And I'm I'm thoroughly in uh, belief that they come prepared to uh, to contribute. Okay. Lastly, there was something I was told I need your approval on. And this will be for next season. Okay. I'd like to be a bat boy for a game. We're going to have to see if MLB will clear that. <laughs> <laughs> Up to you, though. You're fine with it? I'm fine with it. If we can get approval and you want to be a bat boy, I mean, you've got to live up to the expectations of, of our guys. And so that's tough. Cause what are you, you're you not thinking I could? I, I'm not sure. I haven't seen you run for a bat yet. Uh, after a home run, I got it ready. I just <laughs> give the old... Bash right there. All right. Well, uh, maybe for now, Mark, I appreciate your time until then. Yeah, thanks for having me.